we are back with session 35. Uh, I guess technically 35B, but I'm probably going to come up with a better name since we're just going to split everything. So, yeah, I won't fix this in post. Um, so last session, uh, Sarath decided or was coerced or somehow uh, after killing uh, Zane the pirate uh, went full ham on uh, the rest of Zane's crew that was not willing to kowtow to her. Uh, during the course of that, uh, you guys, uh, Gale and Mercana, uh, busted out because there was lots of cryotechnics happening. Um, <laughs> as Sarath moved further into the the pirate cove you were in, and there was lots of uh, structural damage accompanied with lots of uh, cold emanating out from the room she went into. Uh, as you guys got out, you did reunite with artists Zandala and Masika, who had kind of been caught up, and then when parts of the structure started collapsing, uh, made their way down to the courtyard. Uh, you guys did see uh, Sarath uh, begin freezing, uh, literally freezing the ocean to walk out to uh, apparently her new pirate ship uh, with some of the crew who apparently allied with her as opposed to choosing to become ice sculptures or splats of <laughs> frozen blood. And Sarath uh, sailed away. Um, so Sarath is sailing the high seas with a pretty powerful artifact and has disappeared. Uh, as you guys were escaping, uh, Xanthiel, uh, a, I guess correct me if I'm wrong, Laokin, but a, a female centaur, uh, yeah. hastily appeared from, you can only assume, uh, somewhere where she was being held. Uh, Murakana, of course, said the most inappropriate thing possible when he saw her, um, which was the completely, uh, non-innuendo-laden, I want to ride you, um, <laughs> which creeped the hell out of Xanthiel, but I think since then you guys have, she's Xanthiel, you've probably realized that Murakana just, if there's ever a mouth, he puts a foot in it, um, <laughs> uh, and you guys, after that event, um, uh, basically trekked southwards. Um, you did encounter uh, a ruined Yuanti city uh, called Hisari. Uh, you guys did investigate the ruins but didn't find too much of note there. It looks like some cataclysm caused half of the city to collapse about two or three hundred feet into a sinkhole and the city has since been picked over and, and abandoned. Uh, and then you guys made your way to uh, an abandoned camp uh, where you found a bunch of tracks heading in the direction in the direction of Omu. You guys came to Omu, so you yay, you found the lost city of Omu, um, and made your way to this uh, mostly abandoned walled compound that you know the other group had been at. You were expecting to find them here. Um, and I think that's about where we are. I don't know, have I missed anything, Lyokin or Sib? Uh, not that I can think of. I, I just want to say, that is probably exactly what I would have effing said to a... Yep, yep. That, 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 <laughs> felt, that felt right on par. Thank you. So what you guys miss is I'm, I'm pretty good at role-playing uh, Murakana. I'm less good at role-playing Sebastian because I tried to RP him for two seconds last session and that didn't work out because my oh boy stopped. Oh, I tried to launch into, you know, a uh, uh, cautious yet attempting to be stirring speech, but it, it just failed about a sentence in because my brain was broken from trying to role-play a different character. <laughs> uh, that was the worst impersonation of me I've ever heard, and I've done some myself. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think that's where we are. You guys are in the walled compound. 
uh, here. So just to describe this location, you know from um, the other party um, using the sending stone, um, they had had supposedly uh, cleared one weird temple um, or shrine thing here, and then had come over to this compound where there was a uh, probably about a week ago at this point, a battle between uh, Yuanti and Red Wizards. Um, so the, the dead that you see strewn about are the rotting corpses of the people who worked for uh, the Red Wizards. Um, and there's also a no longer smoldering pile to the west, it's just charred bones now. Um, a charred pile of bones uh, into which is thrust a glaive with a charred giant snake skeleton skull thing. Um, well, that doesn't look ominous or anything. Yeah, so you guys have rolled into this location, and that is about where we are at. Ooh. We should hire their interior decorator if we ever have a castle. This is very nice. Does Xanthiel spot anything? Um... <clears throat> he has 21 passive perception. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Jesus Christ. So, I mean, the only thing... You hear um, some movement from the room you're standing in front of, and, I mean, you can... I mean, you can kind of see that there's a, a person inside that, that building you're standing out at the door of. Mm -hmm. I can do for some rushing. Uh, so, he's not sneaking anyway. <laughs> no, this guy wasn't trying to sneak. He's just basically just kind of sitting. No, man. On the Damn, she just fucking walks in. Clop, clop, clop. Um, he's just sitting. This there's a kind of a middle-aged looking guy uh, sitting on a cot here. Um, he's holding uh, a stone cube in his hands, just kind of studying it. And as you uh, walk in, he goes, Ah, um. Welcome, I suppose. Uh, who, who are you? Uh, sure, okay. Well, I am Xanthiel. We are investigating Omo at the moment. It seems like quite a lot's happened here. Ah, um, uh, are you the same? Um, I was going to say person, but I'm not sure if that's the correct she just glares at him. <laughs> uh, my apologies. I'm, I am not familiar with the, the correct terminology of your peoples. I've not interacted with them before. Um, we are Fae. Ah, that is... I was going to go with Horse Goddess, but that works. <laughs> um, well, uh, uh, Miss Xanthiel, I... There were people here... Um, until, well, the last time I went to sleep and they've disappeared, I I think they had mentioned something. You seem to be a strapping um, and imposing uh, figure of a, of a man. Uh, he's looking at you as he says this. <laughs> um, and I, I can see your, I believe, artificer companion at the doorway. H hello. Um, my name is Orvex. Uh, I believe your friends or compatriots, uh, I believe that's what they were, um, th they rescued me um, uh, about a week ago. I was trapped under some rubble, unfortunately, uh, and they fortuitously cleared it. Um, and then we uh, bivouacked in this um, rather squalid kitchen. Uh, and went to sleep and and they slept for a number of days which was uh to be fair quite odd um and then this morning when i woke up um they were gone and i'm left with this this stone cube um so i'm i'm afraid i have no news for you about what has has occurred to to your friends but um I'm I'm pleased to make uh, your acquaintance. What what bring, do you have a particular goal here in Omu? Um, 
for Artis, actually, because I think he'd be the... Actually, no, this is something we're doing for him, because he wants to find uh, what happened to the other city. So this is where I can remind you that you're in Omu, because... For the death curse. Yeah, death curse stuff. Yeah, you, your, your last solid lead was from the Oracle in um, Oralunga, who indicated that the Soulmonger was in an, some sort of tomb complex underneath Omu. Oh, right, and I've just remembered that Xandil can probably have been casting Augury to figure out where it was anyway, so... And I'm just, I'm gonna assume, um, hand wavy that at least in the travels down here, you guys have caught up a bit, at least as to what the point is. Um, yep. the only big question, I guess, Xanthiel is, aside from the fact that you were in a, a pirate dungeon, mm -hmm. <laughs> and these were the closest people when you broke out, um, you know, we can figure out backstory or whatever, um, as time goes yeah. on, or what your particular motivation is um, in being here. Following the path of visions. Cool. Um, so yeah, I guess artisan and company, everybody just pile in. Everybody just pile in. We're here looking for the soul crusher. Wait, no. That's not soul right. Manga. That's the one. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, my former employers were also investigating um, that particular feat of arcane engineering um i i know a little bit about um what they're looking for uh i believe it is in a tomb under this city and my the the, wiz the wizards were attempting to locate and uh, gain entry to that tomb um he holds up the cube that he's holding uh i believe this is one of nine such objects that will be required uh, to enter that tomb. The Tomb of the Nine Gods, I believe, is what the natives had referred to it as. Why does it always have to be in a tomb? Why can't it be on the side of a mountain or in a tropical garden? I would suppose on a mountain there would be erosion concerns, and in a garden, I that that is an interesting question. Uh. <sighs> <laughs> All right, so we get to go cave diving. It's spelunking. Ah, yes, spelunking. My last spelunking trip did not end well. I believe I got stabbed a couple times. You know, I don't know why I say these things to you. Well, I don't, I don't remember exactly, because I also got hit on the head quite hard. I do remember that quite clearly. Um, if you are intent on entering the tomb, um, I, are you familiar with how it must be approached? Is it full of traps? Would they say so? Uh... The content of the tomb is unknown to me, but uh, in my work for the wizards, I was able to piece together, I think, part of the puzzle of how you may enter the tomb. Um, and as it does not appear my employers are going to continue paying me, I am happy to at least accompany you as far as, as the tomb entrance, depending on um, the lethality of that progress. Can we, we very ask much what? Like that. Hmm. Do you, you have any that? abilities that we should be aware of? Um, uh, probably not similar to your own. I am a scribe and a scholar. Uh, I understand uh, the local language, and I have been studying the legends of Omu, especially once we got here. I've been able to, I think piece together the the belief structure that these peoples had had followed that led to their downfall but um i can't say i'm as handy with a weapon or a spell as most of you it could still come in handy local knowledge is always useful Q, 
secure. So, um, this is no one else. He seemed, I'm guessing the other party would have like found other people if there were any. Yeah, I don't feel like we probably need to scour this village for survivors. I mean, we probably could, though. Like, I guess he'll wander off and just quickly kick down the doors and shit. Sure. Um, so as you explore this compound, I'm, I'm just going to give you the the description as you go. There's there's a couple different uh, structures here. Um, there is a basically the southwestern building, um, or southeastern building, sorry, um, is uh, an old smithy. Um, it is ransacked and completely devoid of anything particularly useful. Um, like there's some, some normal weapons and weapon parts strewn around. Uh, Murakana, you're investigating what looks like um, multiple successive groups, it looks like, have used this as a dormitory or barracks or camp area. Um, it just looks like a, maybe it, once upon a time it was a servant's quarter or something like that, but at this point it's, it's hard to tell. Um, there's a well in the middle that is a well. Uh, <laughs> And then, yeah, there's a round building um, kind of northwest of the well. Um, it's it's a couple, it's kind of a domed building. Um, from the outside, it's not really clear what purpose it had. Uh, and then there are, kind of looks like a, to the north, the large building um, looks like it was probably at one point the the main household of this estate and then there is another kind of it looks like from the outside a, a servant's house or a or storehouse to the northeast <clears throat> oh So, uh, yeah, is, oh, did you open the door? Sorry, yep. Okay. Um, weird. Uh, yeah, so that room, that round building, just looks to have a, a central fire pit and a bunch of cots uh, laid out around it. Um, she has a look at the books, I guess. So the books are all, uh, one of them's a journal. Uh, it's in a language that I don't believe you can read. Let me just double check. Probably not. Well, no, because no. she has tongues, so she can understand it anyway. If she has, um. I mean, if you wanna, if, yeah, if you wanna cast, well, tongues lets you speak. It's comprehensible right, languages. Uh, but, 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 do I have that? Hey, what do you so. think about that, Murakana? I figured out how to make roofs that disappear when you enter a building. I, I, I totally expected that to be a collapsed building. So bravo, sir. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I didn't fully do this map, but yeah. Um, so yeah, that's just looks, um, so, okay, Xanthiel, uh... Alright, her background involves, like, she spent a lot of time as an acolyte. So she probably would be interested in, like, nicking some of these journals and shit. Um, she can pick them up. Uh, so yeah, one of the journals is in a language that, at least right now, you don't understand. Um... The other two, the other book looks to be uh, just a, uh, oh, what would it be? Um, it looks, it's a small, thin book. It has a maze on the front cover. Um, and inside it looks to be, again, it's in a language you don't know. Um, but if you had to guess, it looks like a, a religious text of some sort. Hmm. Um, She'll take those there and put them in a pack. Okay. Uh, Murakana, the north building that you had went into, uh, just had um, a, a great room that has fallen into complete disrepair, and then I think a couple, kind of a side room. Um, so this was maybe some sort of communal building back in the day, now it just has a few corpses and a lot of broken wood in it. Um, yeah. Cross that the paladin didn't burn all the bodies or something. <laughs> I mean, he might have, but I don't know 
I think he actually. <laughs> I think Sebastian did burn all the bodies. Is there anything in the charred pile? Uh, lots of burnt bones and the glaive with the weird snake skeleton wrapped around it. Hmm. Is the glaive magical? No, it's a it's a glaive. Oh. Uh, so Xanthiel, this room, so the papers on the floor here, those aren't there anymore. They were actually already picked up. Um, Dang it. And there's just a dead body. Uh, the, the commander that you see uh, it looks like, um, well, at this point, he's pretty rotted. So, yeah, there's just a <laughs> rotted dead dude in the middle of the floor. And, it, again, it looks like this was repurposed by probably the employers Orvex had been speaking of. Um, so you're looking at a, 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 a field uh, Ford operating base for probably the red wizards that he had been working for and everybody was massacred. The red wizards, eh? The red wizards. I said it right this time, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well then. Best to get a, better do something about that to carry some stuff. She animates its corpse. Ah, okay, so what do you get a zombie? I believe so. Well, depends oh, on how attacked it is. I get skeletons or zombies. Yeah, if it's if it's enough to make a zombie, you get the zombie. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just gonna get a zombie and you get a zombie. So great, both parties have a zombino now. Love it. There you go. I mean, the, I mean, this character doesn't have animal handling, so <laughs> she'll have to sell for the next best thing. We're gonna call it, name him the Great Zambino. Yeah. I mean, technically, Zambino's already taken in canon, so we're going for Zambino yeah. instead of Zambino. Zambino. Yeah. Okay, well, you have a zombie for twenty-four hours. Sweet. Twenty-four hours? Not yeah. a lifetime. I mean, I can just cast it again and then I reassert control of up to like four of them. Can I just leave this the rule? Something like that. Yeah, like I can get a bunch of them to make up for the fact that they're pretty individually weak. Uh, you have to cast it at at fourth level. You can get two and. What is it? Two, oh, it's two. Using fourth slot or higher, you animate or reassert control over two additional undead for each slot level above third. So I guess at fourth level, you get three. At fifth level, you get five. Up until hmm. however many you want to cast. So you can upcast it to get more zombos. Fair enough. Oh, I can't control that zombie, by the way. Yeah, I guess I have to make one now. And here I thought I was going to be lucky and not have to deal with another horde of freaking creatures. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get. Sorry, it won't be a horde. It was only just meant to be like to carry shit around and such. But I guess even that's kind of redundant. I'm going to call them Zombie Xanthiel. Oh, I guess this means I'm gonna have to make a a tag too. Amen. I'm gonna have to make green bordered zombies so we know which ones are yours. But I'm oh. not gonna do all of that right now. I'm just yeah, I do... probably won't be bringing it into combat. Permission. So check them up very strong. There, you're an owner. Hey. Oh, not of that one. You're an owner really? of. That one. You should be able to move that one. Which one? Oh, interesting. Wait, is it not letting you control it? Nope, it's still red to me. Oh, I didn't hit save. Haha. -ha. Yep. Try now. Hey. Mmm. Mmm. 
to that. It's also kind oh. of... Oh, there's, a, there's a dog. You hear the sound, oh, your past perception. There's a dog up there in the bushes. Interesting. Um... Come here, doggo! Yeah, I throw, throw a ration thing at it. It, uh... Well, like, not, not like trying to beat it or anything, no, yeah, but like, you it, know. <laughs> it grabs the ration and dashes away. Interesting. It, it did say wild dog, not tamed dog. Yeah, that's fine. Well, 10,000 anyway. euros and it'll be tamed. <laughs> <laughs> Why just the quantity of these things? Yeah. Still did it. Hmm? I was, like, adjusting my rations. But... Because I believe Sarath ran off with most of the, uh, snake rations. Possibly. I mean, I think beyond the no, Sending Stone, not. Sarath probably still took whatever Sarath had at that point. Yeah. I guess you can hear the... the group of the others are kind of chatting uh, outside the, the building where you found Orvex. The thing is yours, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just has it round the corner for then. <laughs> so. I mean, at this point, given everything they've seen, nobody's really surprised. Orvex is kind of like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Um... But yeah, they were just talking amongst each other. Uh, Don't worry, he only bites if you go near him. Oh, this seems a terrible AC. Eight? Cheapers. It's a zombie. Oh, no. They're literally rotted. Rotting. I wonder if you can give him, like, weapons and armor or something. Probably not. I mean, I guess you could put armor on it, but that would be interesting. <laughs> I feel like there are more <laughs> valuable people to give yeah, armor probably. to. Um, I already did. The goddess has armor, and the Zendal is a caster, the Seeker. I don't know what her deal is. I mean, she, yeah. Yep. Um, so as you guys come back, uh, Zendal and Artis are kind of like, so, uh, should we start figuring out what's going on with uh, getting into the tomb? It looks like Orvex here has he has one piece, one of, yeah. one of those cubes that we need. We were talking to him a little bit. It, it seems like we need to visit. Uh, there's there's nine shrines to to nine different gods in this city. Um, and it sounds like each one we have to figure out how to get the cube out of. So we've got one. And it, it also sounds like we're in a little bit of a race because it looks like the red wizards are also looking for them. You know how you stop a red wizard from beating you in a race? <laughs> Artis uh, says, uh, is the answer killing them? I is, I it, what is it ever it's any other answer? There's always many answers to a reach the same destination but remember my friends yes violence is not the not the question or it's not the answer it is the question and the answer is yes always you almost had it termination is always a very final uh solution to any problem so you seem particularly equipped for that um I, i'm sorry i did not catch your name sir He's looking at you. <laughs> oh, I am Americana. Ah, that that is a name with interesting heritage. We should discuss it sometime. I'd be curious to know how how you have come from your homeland to here. Um, but that is perhaps for another time. I have I have a homeland. <clears throat> I, 
Where the eagles fly in come or something, from, buddy. Uh, uh, and I even hit on the head a few times, but your memory can't be that bad. What did Zendala think about having to potentially kill red wizards? Then? I guess we should be interested in that. I, I mean, I never knew where I came from. Yeah, just... Zendala says, uh, I'm not opposed to enacting any lethality, lethal solutions on the red wizards. Hmm. Kill. Oh, I don't mind heading up. Well, there we go. We can find you some red wizards and we can put the red back in their name. Or all over their bodies. Can I move to a folder? I'm just going to drag this guy down to the bottom. Then I can get him more easily. Okay. Cool. Well, let us activate Omu map. Uh. Let me delete where the other party went. Hi, cat. See, if I was smart, I would have done this before five minutes before we started playing. <laughs> but that's what you get. Rip. Um, and I don't think. God damn it, cat! Jesus, they got the zoomies now. Mine always have the zoomies, and that's the one I least expect it. Well, I'm back in the basement, so unfortunately when they have the zoomies, it means I know they have the zoomies. Um, okay, sorry, I'm just, just going through and like cleaning the map up a little bit. Cause... No one affected for them? But... What? No one affected for the other party? Oh, I'm just, I'm splitting it. Like, oh, okay. W wave they your hands. Your they, they went to sleep, and Orvex went to sleep, and when he woke up, they were gone. It's weird. Um... If it ever becomes an issue, we'll solve it later. But I, I doubt that's going to happen. Fair enough. Just because I'm not sure we could ever get the timing to work out right. And I have too many things to worry about, so... Yay! DM Fiat. We're just <laughs> running two campaigns side by side now. Um, so let's see here. Uh... Gail and Lyokin, you were here last week, so you understand the city. Um, Murakana, for you, this city is basically in a, a valley. Um, the uh, stone road-looking things are raised stone roads that run through chunks of the city. Uh, it looks like a waterfall to the northwest of the city at some point. Uh, broke through and flooded a good chunk of the city and also the southeast corner of the city collapsed into a steaming pit of lava um you guys would have known from the other group that where it says five veggie pygmy point um they saw a bunch of veggie pygmies kill a grung by tossing it over the edge into the lava there in some sort of weird veggie pygmy ritual. Uh, veggie pygmies being little Groot looking guys that are about two to three feet tall. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing you would know, although I don't know if it matters for this group as much, is if you fly above a certain height in here, the, the, the edges of this valley, about every hundred feet there's a gargoyle. And if you go flying in the sky, uh, Eventually, the gargoyles will take notice of you. So I think that's man, it. that's Sweet. that's effective defense. And there's a spell effect in the middle of the lava for some reason. I don't know. Whatever. Um, yeah. So you guys are at spot number two. That's that walled compound. Um, at this point. Uh, Orvex will will note that um, I believe the entrance to the tomb is in the north cliff wall somewhere. Uh, however, the locations of the other shrines are 
not known to me. I know the legend of the nine gods, um, but I do not know where their shrines are. I was mostly confined to uh, this compound uh, while, while I was still serving the wizards. Mm. Well, I guess we can always search the city from top to bottom and kill anything we encounter. Uh, I guess Cynthia will cast Ogre. Try to get a gist of where to go. Sure. Um, let's see, Augury. It's a ritual. Yeah, I'm just looking at what it does. Actually, doesn't give you directions or anything. It just tells me whether it's a good or bad sort of result. Pardon me. So here's a question while I read this. Does Do you do anything specific? Is there any ritual or anything you do while casting Augury? She taps her hooves on the ground rapidly. <laughs> it's not fucking Mr. Ed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she could just roll some dragon bones. God, that's fun. an old fucking reference. Can you think of any other recent references of horses talking with their feet? Uh, does Bojack <laughs> count at all? <laughs> Bojack horse. Uh, I guess. You receive an omen about the results of a particular course of action you plan to take. So I guess you would have to have some sort Actually, of... like, plan to go somewhere and then it will maybe turn out shit or not. Yeah, so I guess um, if, if you can formulate, like, I want to go okay. over here. Um, well, where are we at? Where are we at the number two, you're, right? You're at the two, yeah. Um, about that compound then to the left, I guess. Looks like the nearest one. Sure. I don't um, know if you can see that one there. Um... So I think the, the reading you get from the bones is that uh, uh, going in that direction is likely to uh, it's likely to benefit you but has the potential for danger. Hmm. Okay. Well, might as well. <laughs> Sounds like a good enough one as any. Oh. Relay that to the party and... Uh... Is anyone opposed to investigating that area to the west? I'm good. All in favor of murder hoboing. Okay. <laughs> oh. But we always murder hobo. No, no, no. No, I'm controlling the one non-evil member of the party there. The, the one non-evil player? No, that, nobody's evil anymore. Oh, yeah. Really? What, so they just got their alignments back today? Interesting. I, well, nobody has been blatantly evil since then, so I'm going to say that I'm not really super worried about it. But, I mean, nobody currently with the party has done anything blatantly evil. Um, All right. We never did anything blatantly evil. It was just blatantly stupid that led to evil. Ah. <laughs> Wait, there's still a village full of dead grunts that you uh, totally murdered. First off, that orphanage attacked us. We already discussed this. I need to... Wow, okay, cool. I just have to delete a whole bunch of stuff. Second off, I already did a rain dance to the gods. They're okay with it. It's cool. So we don't need that one reset, but we do need this one reset. Where is my reset button? Oh, lighting. Reset Fog of War. Yes. Pa pow Okay. Now that I've done that. <laughs> you do not have any token with vision in this scene. I'm working on it. Like I said, if I was a smart person, I would have actually set this up before five minutes before we started playing. But I'm not necessarily a smart person. 
You're a smart person. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I was going to say smart fellow, but I fucked up. And then I was going to say smart or fart smeller. Does Silu still exist? Yeah, we just don't have them out right now. There we go. I'm just loading the token in so I have it. And Murakana. Okay. So I think you guys, if you go to the the top of the screen, you should be able to see uh, something now. Uh, let me give you guys the description. So as you guys... Uh, approach that location there's this whole area is surrounded by a little wall um but it's like a four or five foot high wall so you can see over it uh there's a rectangular pool of murky water uh, stretching uh across the courtyard or the the space before a vine draped shrine there are rope bridges that once spanned the water floating on the surface sur blah, blah, blah. surface uh, so basically they've collapsed and are tangled in with with the water. Um, there's shards of a toppled monolith forming stepping stones across some of the water. Uh, and in the middle of the pool, there is a statue of a stone frog uh, rising above the water. The pool itself is clouded uh, and full of mud and algae. And uh, let's see here. I know... Xanthiel, uh, you can see an eye stalk of something peeking up out of the water uh, to the northeast end of the pool. Could I, like, do a nature check or something to, like, figure out what that eye stalk might be? Uh, sure. Um, just with guidance. Oof, nature's going to be rough. Can <laughs> I roll an investigation instead, or it has to be nature? I mean, if you're trying to identify a creature, it would be nature. Oh, so, you got an 11. Um, so, you're pretty sure it's some sort of amphibian creature? Um, I don't know with a 10 or 11 if you'd really know much more than that in this area. Um, yeah. Orvex, uh, as you guys are kind of surveying this area, says, uh, This, if the, if the frog motif is accurate, I would uh, be somewhat predisposed to think that this is the shrine of Kupasan, who was a frog god of the Amuins. That part is probably true, but since when do frogs have eye stalks? I'm afraid I'm not much of a naturalist. <laughs> uh, do you know if this frog god still exists? Uh, the gods of Omu, um, it, it isn't really known if they still exist um, as, as recently as perhaps a century ago. They were uh, likely active. Uh, I mean, these shrines were built probably 200 years ago or so, after the Omuans uh, were abandoned by Ubteo. But I am not sure of the the current activity of these deities. Curious. Mm. Um, how deep is that water? Uh, from from the top, you can't really tell. It's it's muddy and covered in algae. Um, uh, the eye stalk is watching you guys. Um, you you are aware of that. Um, but how large the creature is, like if you were guessing based on the depth, it's really hard to say from from where you are. <laughs> And that thing there is that's like a, I guess like a stone statue sort of thing. Yeah, that's the, the the frog statue. It doesn't really look like a frog. I don't. Yeah, it's like a almost like a. 
person's screaming or upset face. Yeah, I'm not sure design-wise. It's, you know, Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> Sometimes... I was thinking about that, but... Uh... We'll go around it. I'll point out to the other party members that there's a uh, possibly some sort of large thing in the water there. So Artist draws his bow and follows. Uh, as well Zandala, Orvex. Orvex is just kind of making his way. Um, kind of trying to stay behind everybody else a little bit. <laughs> He's... Are there any rocks on the ground? Huh? Any rocks on the ground? I mean, there's various stones and, and, and other stuff. You're going to throw a rock at it? <laughs> I want to grab a rock and throw it at the very opposite end of the pond. Uh you do so it splashes and as you are you throwing it at the eye stalk or just into the pond very far side of the pond right against the bank opposite to us so the eye stalk watches the the rock go bloop into the water and then turns back to follow you guys yep don't like that <laughs> maybe don't throw rocks at it uh, I was more thinking than the lines that he knows that we're a bigger meal than that rock. Well, yeah, the rocks don't usually... Uh, they're not well known for their nutritional value. Unless you're a stone elemental. Yeah. Cool. So that door... Sorry, I should make sure it's... There we go. Um, so as you kind of walk between those those two obelisks... Um, let's see what, uh, you come and you see a, a pair of heavy stone doors, probably about, about four feet wide each and about 10 feet tall, um, made out of stone leading into this vine covered shrine. Interesting. I will notice any traps today. Ah, uh, no. Cool. Um, does that door look locked? Uh, it locked? looks like a stone door. Oh, yeah, true. I will try and push on it to, like, open it. Uh, so you try to push on it, it does not budge. So it's either, it's either stuck or locked, um, based on your attempt to push it open. Hey. So we probably need to look for something to open it. Do Bello. Have to... <laughs> what? No one got the reference. You're trying to speak friend? Yes. No. <laughs> oh. I mean bonus yeah, I points for the point. attempt, but it it fails to work. <laughs> um Let's see. Get my zombie to attack the door. Your zombie to attack the door? <laughs> um. God damn it, did I write this down last time? Of course, I didn't write any notes about that. Uh. <laughs> you didn't anticipate the cleric raising a zombie to attack doors. What god do you follow? Uh. Or shit. do you? I guess it's 5th edition, you don't no. have to. Uh, shit. Savaris, the god of prophecy. Okay. God, 5th edition is so weird with this stuff. Okay. Um, I know. <laughs> a non-evil god that gives raised dead powers to its clerics. What? Um, I mean, it's just in a... <laughs> it's, he's a lawful neutral god, so, you know. Yeah. Raising the dead isn't technically evil, I would argue. It's it depends more on what you do with it. Yeah, that's a different debate. Um, 
that I don't really care about getting into right now, but it, yeah, it's probably... Anyway, morality is relative. Um, okay. So you want to attack the door with the zombie? Yep. Right uh, after I get back a little bit. Roll an attack on the door. Sweet. Uh, action. Uh, the, zombie's, <laughs> the zombie's fist slams into the door with a kind of sickly you maybe hear a bone break uh, and and nothing happens oh I'm out of ideas <laughs> uh, now I can't see anybody got a oh wait oh no I don't I got wood of working hammers uh, should have something oh hey let's see here Nope, nope, nope. Okay, there is something written above the doorway, uh, carved into oh. the lintel. Sorry. Oh, okay. Because it's like, oh, this is a weird puzzle. That's no fucking place. Um, sorry. Sure. I love the way that they lay out the the thing, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's written in a language. I think. Uh, let's see here. So, at this point, where are we gonna put people? We'll have artists over here, and I guess Zandala's. Over here? Seeker too, who can possibly read stuff. Hmm? A seeker? I think she could read some Cholton, I would imagine. Uh, it is not written in Cholton. Oh, but thank you for reminding me that Masika is here. Uh, we'll put Masika over here. Um, so Orvex comes up behind you and he goes, Ah, yes, um, let's see, this, this inscription above the door, uh, it states... Oh, well, I guess I was right. Uh, Kupasan urges us to tread without fear and to give back as much as we take. Walk without fear and give as much as you take. Do you time. believe any of that? Because we're not exactly one for one on things in this jungle not trying to kill us. Oh. I mean, I'm not entirely sure how that riddle helps us. Um, I was going to say, sorry, I'm doing just a great job tonight. Um, there is what appears to be a keyhole in the door. Oh. Um, after you kind of brush away some of the vines and stuff that have overgrown it. Well, we... None of us picked up a key, did we? No, but armchair philosopher aside, you guys see anything in that pond? Well, we, we did see that monster in the pond. Yes. Uh, so... at, this, at this point, the eye stalk has moved to the southeast corner of the pond kind of over here hmm. look for any frogs or anything on the ground where'd you get frogs from i mean we're around a pond yeah but that's a key like what do you want to jam a frog into it no no there's, there's a thought process here. It may not be a great thought process, but there's one. So the weird moon face in the middle, that statue, should actually be like a frog. If you're looking for frogs, that is a froggy looking thing. I'm looking for a living type. Just... Um... I can say you don't really notice any that said if there are any frogs in the pond they'd be underneath that skim of mud and algae that's growing on the pond so it's we got any uh cooked meat left i'll examine the statue as well see if i can find anything helpful um So I'll say from where you are, uh, the the face of this frog is kind of looking upwards, and it has an open mouth. Um, but from 
where you're standing, it's not possible to see inside the mouth. Where'd Sula run off to? Here we go. Pleasant. When in doubt, send in the bird. So, uh, as Silu lands, what is that? Da, 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 da. Okay. Oh, I have to do this this way. Hey, uh, big guy, bets on this bird exploding again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let Hope me you just put a bigger bomb on this. Here. Uh, does a 19 hit Silu? Uh, it will, yeah. <laughs> so a tentacle whips out of the pond as Silu kind of... Does Silu land on the statue or get close to the statue? What is... Just flying above it. So as Silu gets close, a tentacle whips out of the, uh, the pond and I might have bad news for you. Okay, well, let's find out. Um, no, yeah. 10 hit points. Um, yep. Yeah, the tentacle cracks Silu in half and grabs one half and drags it into uh, that bottom corner of the pond. <sighs> Shit. Sorry. It's not gonna fly. Well, uh, good thing I didn't put money on that one. <laughs> so, I think it's a safe bet to say that maybe the whole tread without fear thing is a bit uh, underselling. <laughs> We could, we could go and destroy the vines, but I'm not entirely sure what that would get us. Unless you want to send Mr. Bones out there. We could, but I'm not entirely sure what we'd get out of that besides just getting a zombie kill. I feel like... Hold on, let me... Uh, oh, well, Silu's harder to hit than the zombie. The zombie has a few more hit points than Silu, but not by much. <laughs> yeah, it's got like 22 hit points, but 8 AC, so... Conversely, Xanthiel could grab it because she has 23 AC. <laughs> Why are you shooting? <laughs> I'm shooting that eye stock right in the face. Okay. Uh, you do 9 damage and the eye stock uh, kind of... You killed it, I guess. The crossbow bolt snaps through the eye stock. Um... And it withdraws, and then the water in the the corner down there starts bubbling. Um, God, can I do this right? Nope, I can't. Come on. There we go. Cool. I think um, I made it mad. You did. Uh a giant frog looking thing God damn it, Americana. <laughs> surges up from the water uh, I'll say you guys have time to position but it is going to attack well Xantel used a bonus action to cast shield of faith on herself oh god how many hit points <laughs> or AC points. points 23 now cast 25. and gun uh, which is 25 AC Uh, okay. But do I have time for an action as well, or no? Uh, you have time to move, you don't have time for an action. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. I will I'm move. just letting you guys get into a position that you want to be in before we start fighting. I'll move near Gale because I don't I don't want him to get you can like, move through. spaced by that. Oh, okay. Sorry, let me look. I'll, like, pick up Gale and like move him back <laughs> somewhere. Uh, I'm going to pick Gale and toss him over the wall. And then he can just what? shoot from behind the wall. You Did I stutter? Yeah. How far? How tall is that wall? Because if you throw it's like him... four feet. Oh, that's right. There. We could jump I, over that. I gently <laughs> set him on the other side of the wall. Um, so where do you guys want Artis, Sandala, and Masika? Um, I would probably have Sandala safely, like as far away from that thing as possible. So we'll put her over there. Yeah, because she can still sling spells from like pretty far range. I think Artis is gonna stay. He's going to hop over the wall and have his bow drawn. So he's behind cover. Actually, 
Zendala should be behind cover too. Um, yeah, okay. Are you guys happy with where you are? Yep. And I think I'm oh, sorry, I'm going to move my zombie so I can actually see where's... Um... Because that wall blocks the line of sight so I can't see them. Oh, hold on. Let's just... Can I... Just, uh... Sweet. Oh, does the wall block all line of sight for you guys? Yeah, completely. Yep. Oh, it's one of those walls. Okay, sorry. Let me just, um... So just for movement purposes, the walls are there. Like, jumping over them will count as difficult terrain. Um, but there. You should be able to see everything now. Okay. So you guys all good? Uh, how, how deep is that pit, I guess? The pit itself is maybe four or five feet from the top to the water. Um, you don't know how deep the water is. And then at this point, I think I just need initiatives from you guys. Oh, yeah. Which I think it just rolled very well. I'm gonna roll for your zombie. Go zombie! Go! Go! Go zombie! Oh, he's almost last. Uh, so, Zendala gets to go first. So what do you want her to do? Because I'm going to control, I think, Masika and Artis, and I'll let you guys control Zendala for now. Hmm. Well, we're going to have to open up with a class. I don't even need to look. I just know it's a fireball. <laughs> <laughs> just in case there's anything else in there. So it needs to make a dex save, I think. Dexterity save. Oh, am I still private? Oops. Let me turn that off. It was an eight. Um, oh, okay. That's but I'm on private roll. Public roll. Cool. So it takes 30 fire damage. So you blast yep. that giant frog for 30 damage. And it kind of bellows in response as it gets hit by that flame, and then I'm going to get rid of the fireball token because it doesn't stay. And it's a pool of water. It's not gasoline. <laughs> it's good to extinguish. Um Do you want her to move or take a bonus act? Uh she should be okay where she is. Okay. Murakana, it is your turn. Oh yeah. Just let me find my little action attribute. Did we long rest last time? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to decide if I should have four rages or three, because I've got three because we never reset my rages. Well, let's... Yeah, go ahead and just hit the long rest. Bam! So you rage. You are raging. Now what? I cast cross though. <laughs> Just. No, oh, fine. Um, okay. Uh. Let's see here, so a 15 will hit, that will do 10 piercing damage. Oh, that was silly, he should have only taken 15. Oh well. He was resistant to that fire damage for what it was worth. Oh, yeah. So that actually all... that, so he'll take 5 damage, just to balance that out right. Because <laughs> he should have taken 15, not 30. Um, so, yeah, there. Cool. So you have you have shot a heavy crossbow into that dude. Um, your crossbow is now empty. Uh, do you want to move? Uh, quick question: How yeah. tall is this creature? Uh, big. Like you can. It's now that it has reared up out of the water. It's probably at level with you guys. Um, okay, so the water is at least six feet deep. Hmm. 
Hmm? The water is at least six feet deep, right? You don't know. But I can surmise based on his height. If you want to surmise that, that's fine, but I don't I don't know if you would know or not. You can assume okay. that. Like, you can just say my character assumes the water is six feet deep, and that's fine, but... Um... Okay, that works for me. All right, and that's my turn, because I have to reload this sucker. Ah. Sorry. What did I do? No, I did that. Um, so Orvex is like, Oh, um, I'm going to let y you all solve this particular um, trial of combat. And he just kind of <laughs> he just kind of ducks back around the corner. He's, he's got nothing. Um, and that is Orvex's turn. Yeah, let's see here. Yep. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Uh, let's say he'll he'll fire a hand crossbow uh, shot at it as he runs away, kind of like oh, um, as, he's, as he's walking backwards. He's not very good at this. Um, but he manages to hit it though. So despite his bumbling uh, approach to that, he he puts a little hand crossbow bolt in it as he scrambles away, and that will make it Xanthiel's turn. Sweet. And she will charge blindly forward. Fuck this robot. So how tall is Xanthiel? Uh, nearly, what, nine foot? Okay, so you... Which is percent tall, so... <laughs> yeah, so as she leaps in, uh, just so you know, uh, her feet hit the muddy bottom of this pool, and about her chest and shoulders are above water from where she's standing. Um, okay, so and... she can still use her shield and... Yeah, that. this will just count as difficult terrain for movement because it's a muddy, oh, disgusting okay, so pool. Then... Oh, because she leapt, I guess. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Up. I'll give you that okay. on the, the leap in because you're a centaur and that seems cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to give you that. <laughs> cause... There you go. Um, so yeah, Please. Xanthiel can, can reach the creature. Um... Let's see, what's that? So yes, it is about six feet deep. Zerg smart and get the worst possible roll. Love it. So oh, the next time I hit a creature. Yeah, never mind. So that's a bonus action. Okay. I did that in the wrong one. So that mace will not hit. It, it, it hits it, but it doesn't seem to do anything to the oh. grotesquely thick hide of this frog thing. Uh, I guess then ignore that <laughs> spot because I didn't read that I actually have to hit. Well, it's the next time you hit, so oh, okay. the duration okay. is one minute. Oh, okay. fair enough. Um, so yeah, so you bonus acted. That's the first attack. Do you have a second attack? Uh, don't think clerics do. I think. Should say. Let's see. Features. Oh no, they don't. Yeah, it's like warriors and stuff that do. What are your prepared spells? Cool, okay. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no, that should be everything, sorry. Cool. I don't have an end turn button for some reason. Weird, okay. Uh, it is the creature's turn. Bring it. Uh... And yeah, you're right there. Um, <laughs> so let's see here. That's that, plus that. In my defense, I did chuck a fireball down there to test if there was anything else in the pond. Well, I'm just... Sure. Sorry, I'm just yeah. looking at yeah. my options real quick. Uh, let's see. So it is... Uh, first, it is going to whip a tentacle at you. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to Japan. God, it's just every single time. The same time, not like this. Oh. Hey, I hit you. Wow, that's oh. impressive. You um, just hit me. <laughs> so you take 17 damage and you are grappled. It's an escape oh. DC of 16. Um, yeah, you're not a huge creature. You're not larger than huge. Um, that tentacle is, is wrapped around you. Uh, the next thing it will do is... <laughs> that's hilarious. Um yeah. 
it is going to uh, try to bite you. Oh, bird. Let's see what it does. Well, that missed. Uh, and it, <laughs> that missed. It just kind of bites its own tongue. And I'm going to say it takes uh, five damage and roars in anger. <laughs> it bites its own tongue. Um, you do see there's some sizzling as it as it bites. Like the saliva that flies off its mouth is kind of uh, hissing as it hits the water. And I think... Oh. Um, let's see here. Why don't I don't have it. a health bar. That's weird. Uh, it's because I haven't enabled it. Sorry. Um, yeah. Just a number one DM. I can fix it after this. Okay. It is Gale's turn. All right. Uh, see, I would thunderbolt this guy, but uh, you know, water. Yeah. <laughs> That kind of complicates things, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and we will cast Gun and use that this turn around. Is that the Ballista? Yep. Okay. Uh, get the Ballista. <laughs> so many things. Uh, it does six damage. Um, so it smacks into it. Uh, it can't be pushed back any further. Um, Understandable. So it doesn't get pushed back, but it does take, that's what, force damage? Six force damage? Burp. And we're going to move around this corner. Cool. Uh, so it is... Is that it? Yep, that's it. Oh god, I did it again. Okay, uh, Masika. How far can Masika move? She can move pretty good. How far would that be? So that would be 35. She is going to make an acrobatics check. Ah, shoot. Um, she's going to make an acrobatics check to try and jump onto this pillar. God damn it, cat. Calm the fuck down. So let's see what happens. Oh, we'll say the DC is that. And she passes. Uh, so she lands on the pillar behind you, um, and she is actually going to attack uh, the the tentacle that's holding you, Xanthiel. Um, functionally, if she hits, I'll say it'll give you advantage on your escape. Oh, sweet. So she will attack once, which will hit. She'll attack again. Jesus, she's good at hitting things, and she'll attack a third time. So she just, with her with her blade, she's like, whick, 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 and uh, she puts Jesus. out some damage. Um, also, it turned out I was wrong. I actually do get two attacks, because when um, a centaur charges at things, she can use her hooves to hit as well as a bonus act. Rip. Cool. Sorry, I'm just totaling up the damage here. So, uh, Masika has just sliced into that frog pretty good. Uh, it is your zombie's turn. Wait. I think in future I'll just have zombies act on your turn. Yeah. Oh, you can only move 20 feet. <laughs> it charges into the moat, falls over, and lands on its face. So it kind of walks in, goes, Psh, and right now it is just underwater. <laughs> walking towards you. Yeah. You just kind of see ripples from above. <laughs> walking in the general direction. Cool, it's Artis's turn. Uh, let me check Artis. Um, yeah, he's got range for a bow shot. Uh, so he is going to shoot with not his... Yeah, he's going to shoot with his longsword. No. Um, <laughs> just throws it. Yeah, he gets an extra attack. So he gets two longbow attacks. One, two. Those will both hit for nine damage total. Uh, yeah, and you guys have started to lay some hurt into this frog creature. Uh, it is Zendala's turn. Interesting. Uh, it was resistant to fire, wasn't it? 
it was resistant to the fire. What? A searing smite with a weapon? I believe so. Yes, a melee weapon. So your hooves cannot be on fire. <laughs> no, but like her. I meant more that when she charged it, she should have used her hooves and then yeah, hit yeah. the weapon. Chromatic orb, which damage type are you choosing? Uh, we are going to do cold. Okay. So you hurl it. And then you make a ranged spell attack. So the attack is 18 for 16 damage, so that will hit. Um, it is not resistant to cold damage, so that is 16 damage. Uh, God, I love huge monsters, blood spatters. <laughs> it's the pool is red now. Yeah, there's just this coating of frog blood just seeping into the water. Um, cool, that's the act. Do you have a bonus act? Uh, not one that is combat relevant. Okay. I'm going to go to the next turn. Murakana, you're up. Alrighty, seeing his friends being attacked, he just runs in and just like swan dives off the side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna say you get uh, your first attack at normal. Um, you get two attacks, right? Oh yeah, baby. So your first attack is normal because you're making it while you're looking at it. Uh, cool. Oh, Damn. Wow, crit. Nice. <laughs> um, so your first attack as you leap in hits, you also sink pretty much under the water. So your second attack is at disadvantage. Fuck. Is that 21 for the first attack? Yeah. Yeah. No, nope, that's not what I wanted. I'm trying to not reset the hit points by mistake. Yeah, Xanthia will get away with this because she's fucking extremely tall. Yeah, she's yeah, really tall. Yeah, I did not take that into account. <laughs> I, yeah, so the second but attack I'm... underwater misses. Um, you're also technically underwater right now, um, just so you know. So that's your uh, action, uh, movement. Do you have an underwater bonus action? I, I don't know if I have shit for this, so I'm just going to end my turn. Okay. This is why you should have picked the pirate background like Sarah did, because she had that was her one feat that she got from the background, where she could fight without penalty underwater. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so it's Orvix's turn, and, and from the corner over there he shouts, uh, Yes, you are splendidly doing the fighting thing. Con <laughs> continue doing so with... with with great fury and that's his turn uh xanthiel you are grappled um oh, yeah. and it is your turn so i can use my action to break it i guess oh uh, yeah you can okay. make an action to try to break the grapple it's uh let's yeah. see here a dc 16 escape and i'll say it's at advantage because masika laid so much damage into that tentacle um do i use shit i don't know oh i think it's athletics or acrobatics Ah. Well, unfortunately, Xanthiel's fucking terrible at both. Um. <laughs> uh, so the 18 will break it, so you are free. So you have a movement and bonus act. Alright. Yeah. That's a lot of bonus act. Yeah, Yay! Toss the treasure some more. Uh, and that should be cool. You said you don't have an end button? Yeah, I don't have one. Okay, it is the creature's turn. Uh, Murakana, you attacked it last. So it is going oh, to attack you. Oh, what does that do? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> that's not something you want to do. That's cool. Um, first, it is going to tentacle you, Murakana. Has a 26. Oof! 
Yeah, no, that hits. Well, that. So you take nine damage because you're raging. And then it is going to bite you. You're also grappled. And you're Crap. in the water. Um, oh, God. <laughs> so it's going to bite you now. Oh, this is fun. Um, <laughs> so it bites you. Uh, and you are size medium? Yeah. Okay, so you take the pierce, so you take, what is that, 15 piercing damage and 5 acid damage as it bites you. And it swallows you. Oh gosh. You are uh -oh. inside the frog. So, this counts as blinded and restrained and total cover against any attacks or effects from outside the frog Uh There is damage at the beginning of its turn. Um, you're you're no longer grappled, but you are restrained. Uh, that said, uh, you can attack from inside it. You can also make a constitution. A constitution. Oh no! Blah, blah, blah. You can attack it on your turn from inside. So. Does that make All sense? Right, so, can I just say that I light my axe up as absolutely <laughs> bright as possible? So, everybody so can they, see. So so the, yeah, so they can see me, and the, glow, or the frog is now a glow in the dark. Frog. Yeah, there's like a glow coming from its belly. Uh, Gale, it is your turn. Alrighty. I'm so glad I got to use that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, first upset. up. God, that's a lot of blood. <laughs> So first up, we will do the obvious, and this? I swear I scroll past this every time I need it. Go for that. Your force ballista? Yep. 21 will hit for 10 damage. Again, it can't be pushed backwards. Uh, this... Followed by... Go Sorry, go ahead. No, you go. Oh. All right, then we will follow that up with our Scorching Ray. Do you get two or three of those now? Uh, I'm, I still just get the three okay. rays. Yeah, uh, I'm just casting it at the regular level. Okay. So the first attack hits for six damage because it is resistant to fire. And the second... Uh, let's see, three of these. The second attack. Okay, so they all hit. So you managed to zap, zap, zap this guy, or foosh, foosh, foosh this guy, I guess. Um, he'll take four and three, so he'll take another seven damage. He is not looking good right now. Um, you guys have just been laying into this frog hemoth creature. Um, anything else on your turn, Gale? Nope. That bastard has no idea how long it takes to fix that bird. <laughs> Masika's turn. Um, Masika, from her spot on the. Uh, let's see here. How does this always happen? Um, I like a game. Um, no, she can't quite get anywhere, but she's gonna kind of dance over here um, to kind of, I guess, be in position if the she's going to be ready if it moves closer she's going to ready an action to attack it if it gets within her attack range um, then it is uh, zombies antheal's turn all right it uh, makes its way closer underwater because of the... <laughs> i'll say it can attack at disadvantage <laughs> at the legs of this giant frog i can't remember how do you roll a negative thing in this you don't roll negative. You just roll it. Dis you just when you click the button, it should just give you the option to do it. Okay. Dispatch. Or I think uh, shift and crunch. <laughs> and uh, the zombie manages to hit because that's a determined zombie. Uh, so you just you just hear this kind of <laughs> sound from under the water, and it punches the frog hemoth. Uh, <laughs> It will be Artis's turn. Um, let's see here. He's gonna shoot his longbow again twice. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Longbow one. That'll 
hit. And longbow two. That'll hit. And that is just enough to take this thing out. Um, so it is, Jesus, <laughs> just blood <laughs> everywhere. It starts uh, sinking into the water. Uh, Murakana, you are inside of it. Uh, Zed will try to like rip it, but will follow it, I guess, swim under the uh, what do you, What do you do, Murakana? Kind of going to do things slightly out of order here, but what do you do? Well, fuck, I don't have anything but an axe. So I just grip my axe and just start sawing away at his guts. Just, so I uh, make two attack rolls. Okay, so we'll say for, for the effect, since it's dead, um, you manage to hack your way uh, through its belly and you erupt from the water uh, covered in stomach acid and frog blood um, and are kind of like you climb on top of its corpse and are able to just kind of stand on this squishy corpse uh, <laughs> in the pool above the water and that is the end of that fight oh, oh I have seen the other side of the mountain and it is squishy <laughs> <laughs> nice Okay, so yeah, you've got a you got a corpse of a frog hemoth, <laughs> blood everywhere. Um, uh, the zombie get, tries to drag Murakata out of the pool. <laughs> yes, um, yes, I'll go. So everybody comes up. Uh, Orvix says, "Yes, well done with the cutting and slashing, and and spell shooting." You all seem quite adept at that. Bravo. I oh. want to investigate the frog face. <laughs> okay. Um, so you get to the frog face. Um, you can see as you climb up the statue uh, in the mouth of the frog, there is a key kind of buried in, or like buried in the bottom of that spot. Who are you healing? Um, me and Murakana. Oh, you're doing that 10 minute one? Cool. Yep. I'm gonna go grab what's left of this bird again. <laughs> oh. um, for future reference, I was debating having Masika try to jump on your back and use you <laughs> as a stepping so awesome. stone, but I didn't necessarily... I realized I, I didn't do it because I wanted to not have a NPC give a killing blow, but I realized that wasn't going to be possible after I got to Artis. Um, so I don't know. In the future, if you want me to do that, I'll do that. I just... Trying not to make I, NPCs overshadow people. I, I just got to say, it, how can you overshadow me? I just hacked my way out of the inside of a frog. Yeah. <laughs> like, it doesn't get any better than this shit. We can now check one off the bucket list. <laughs> I'm just glad it got to swallow somebody. I'm just glad it was me. <laughs> I had to attack you. It wasn't like I had a, that good of a chance of hitting Xanthiel. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to grab a spear and I'm going to like, because I'm not putting my hand down this thing's throat, because I've learned, and I'm going to like fish this, this thing out. Okay. Yeah, you do so. Huh. I expected it to snap down. Alrighty then. The, the frog was the, the frog hemoth was the trap. <laughs> At least in this case, but I like I like the approach. That's a good approach. I'm just assuming everything is out to kill me right now. Um, I'm sorry that I can't reinforce that right now, but it was it was a good a good thought. Oops. And now that I've given you the idea, the next time this happens, I'm losing my arm. Okay, so you're able to unlock the door. Um, I'm assuming you push it open. I kick it open. I don't push anything. Just... So this <laughs> leads to a very awkward scenario where you try to kick the heavy stone door, and your foot stops, and then in frustration you keep pushing, and the door slowly <laughs> slides <laughs> open as you like do the slow motionist Spartan kick ever. 
This is Olmo! There you go. So the door opens. Um, the room beyond, I think the two of you can see it. Uh, so there are steps descending to a ledge overlooking a 30-foot deep pit with that is just full of sharpened stakes at the bottom. Uh, there's an alcove on the far wall which holds a pedestal with a stone cube uh, similar to the one that Orvex gave you guys uh, resting on it. There is a relief carved into the back of the alcove showing a monstrous frog with tentacles fighting a crane. There are wooden beams sticking out from the walls at floor height, uh, each about four feet between them. Carved frog heads are all around the edge of this room. Uh, so yeah, you've got a 30-foot pit, wooden beams around the edges, and there's a pedestal across the pit from you guys. Sandy traps. Uh, the room is the trap. No, I know, but like, do I see any like pressure plates or anything like that? Um, let me see. Um. Go to love having fucking twenty-one passive perceptions. <laughs> well, it's interesting, yeah, because this is where I again. Um. You're pretty sure the beams do something. Um. Like it looks like they're not completely just mortared into the wall. It looks like there's a little space around each of them. Um, yeah, that's, that's what you can tell. Okay. Like I was thinking maybe that this room is like one of those ones where the room like fucking shrinks or something like the walls come in or whatever. But... No, I'm going to go with when you step on the beams, they either hold or they just fall. Hold that. Well, Xanthiel's not doing any of that shit because she's a fucking horse person. So. Yeah, because she's 900 pounds. She actually weighs 2,100 pounds, like in like cannon-wise. So she's a very heavy horse. But she's, she's a still very a medium big creature girl. somehow. Yeah, fucking, even though like she doesn't count as one when she's carrying anything or whatever. Oh, you have that weird, like, you count as a size higher for everything? Yeah, like if she's carrying or pushing or whatever, she counts as a large creature. Okay. Hmm. So she's a medium, only in the sense that, like, of what spells can affect her, or that she can get grappled by a halfling somehow. Yeah, I guess just because we have three NPCs and three PCs of note, um, you have noticed, so, like, Artis is kind of a fighter type. Zandala is obviously a sorcerer. Uh, Masika, uh, definitely seems to be a more agile type person um so if, if you guys ever want to ask any of them to try something or discuss anything with them they're yeah does that make sense masika <laughs> what do we have well actually technically speaking we also have as a dollar to cost fly yeah i'm 250 pounds yeah, the things do not look good out. for me Oh, wait, yeah, let's just fly over there. This is dumb. <laughs> Why am I trying to solve this puzzle? I technically speak, Xanthil could do the same thing, but she doesn't have it ready. So. So, I mean, I want to see her fly. Um, do you want me to fly, or should I fly someone else over? Um... Well, well, you could. I think it'd be safer if she casts it on someone else, so that you know, if her concentration is broken, she doesn't just fall to her death. Yes. So who, who should I cast it on? Who wants to go? Um. Well, I guess I can go. <laughs> okay. Um. Give me. A I, I'm just going to point this out right now. I was going to tie a rope around whoever goes, but. Um... Well, she's a horse. If you really, really need to, she can climb on her back. <laughs> I feel like if you... <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine the scenario where you try to catch a 2,100-pound centaur as it falls out of the air. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he would. He would at least try. Uh, at the very try. least. Um, <laughs> so, Maybe he's into that. Who knows? So Zendala says, um, So Xanthiel, you want me to cast it on you? Uh, if you could, please. Okay. And she uh, 
kind of makes a few gestures and channels some power, and you feel the wind beneath your wings. You're a Pegasus now. <laughs> <laughs> Friendship is magic, guys. We got to My Little Pony within one session. <laughs> We're going to solve the death curse with the power of friendship and this gun that I found. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, I guess I'll just fly over the stakes. Sure, yeah. I mean, you can fly for, I guess, a minute yeah. or whatever it is. Um, so, yeah, That's you can it. fly over there. Um, when you get over there on the pedestal... Um, oh, yeah. So, let's see here. Da, 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 Um, sorry, I'm just reading descriptions to see if there's anything I need to tell you. So the, the puzzle cube is sitting on the pedestal, and it is sitting on a little ring of stone in that pedestal. Um, okay. So, like, here I'm just going to draw something on the side of the map because your crazy perception. Um, so, like, <laughs> here, off to the to the right on the screen. Um, so, the oh, that's a horrible color. Um, Let's see what if you're drawing. If you're drawing anything. Oh, you can't see anything? Yeah, like, besides this map, like, everything else is black. No, I mean, it should be on the map right here. Is there a green cert? Oh, because you're not in the room. Okay. You don't have vision on it. Hey! Can you see that? Is this... Oh. Well, it's hidden. That's why. Oh, yep. Yeah, now I can see it. Now I can see, guys. So if this is the top of the pedestal, there's another... The, the cube... Oh, come on. Let me draw another one. Sorry, I'm trying to... This is a tricky thing to do, apparently, with shapes. So basically, there's a, a, a slightly discernible ring inside the pedestal, like, on the f top of the pedestal, and the, the cube is sitting on that inner circle. Does that, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Yep, we need the cube. I um, grab the cube. The piss bolt out. Okay. As you grab the cube, uh, the doors to this place slam shut. That stone, those two stone doors slam shut with a thunk, and gas starts seeping out from the mouths of all of the frogs oh, uh, lining this place. Um, so I think. How high does the ceiling go? Like ten feet. Yep. Uh, yeah, so, uh, immediately in just this, like, just this second, what do you guys do? Uh, can Zandala mold Earth? No, oh, that was Sarath's thing. Fuck. Alright, uh... I didn't have the right spell prepared for that. We have the ability, but I can't. Didn't ready that, so... I I take my axe and I just, with all my strength, slam it right down the center of the crease of the door. Uh, make an attack roll. Not really meant as an attack, just like to wedge it in there. Just. I mean, it's pretty much seamless. Um, oh. So yeah, you you smash into the door. Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna make a note here. One. Um, I. I just want to say the irony of the fact that Gale would have been perfectly fine in this situation. Yeah. <laughs> the only person outside. I mean, so it's Earth because you just fucking face out of the into the ethereal realm. But like, god damn it. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, okay. So... Oh yeah, she took that fucking thing with her. Damn. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll be fun when you fight her. Uh, okay, so. Your attack, uh, your axe bounces off the door. It's an AC-10. Um, so you, you, you don't do any damage to the door. Uh, Xanthiel, what do you do? Uh, shit. I have it all ready. Very well. Uh, so 
cast elemental weapon. Elemental weapon? Okay. Uh, let's see. I enchant my weapon. What does elemental weapon do? So your mace becomes magic? Becomes magical, and it can do extra cult damage. Okay. Well, um, that does. <laughs> so you attack. You got a 13, it hits the door, so you do, I guess, attack damage plus 4 cold damage. I'll just roll the mace. Yeah. I guess, yeah. <laughs> so, 13, 16 damage. So you, you crack in and, and take some of the stone out. Um, so that's that. Okay. Uh, I need both of you to make a constitution save. As the gas starts getting in your lungs. Hey, you both pass. Nothing happens. Um, the gas is nasty, but it doesn't have any effect on you right now. Um, outside, uh, while this is happening, uh, Zandala is concentrating on the fly spell, even though the, the door is closed. Um, Artis walks up and says, Gail, d do you have the key to the door? No. Who's got the key? I, I don't know. Who does have the key? I thought Mercado might have had it. I got it. Okay. Um, and you, artist kind of yells at the door, and I think you kind of hear muffled sound from the other side because it's a stone door. You just hear artist go, um, It is your guy's turn to act, kind of. Or it uh, is, I guess. Keyhole! Oh, is there a hole over here? Yeah, there's a keyhole. I grab the key and I slam it in the hole. You hear a thunk, and the door you assume is unlocked now. Now I use everything on my all my strength to pull the door open. Uh, let's see here. What is your strength? I'm just gonna grab a crowbar and start prying yeah. at this thing the best we can. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys start to get the door cracked open, um, and the gas starts leaking out. Xanthiel, what do you do? I'm helping him open the door. You guys open the door and burst out, um, with that green gas kind of dissipating and following you out. Um, and you are outside. Uh, you all right? Yeah, we're fun. All right, let's not do that again. That was the yeah, Indiana. next time you guys get locked into a gas chamber, uh, how about you don't? Uh, next time we have a gas chamber, how will we push you in it? Something that will affect you. That was the Indiana Jones puzzle that you failed. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we did have this as a potential solution. No, if it'll let me. But I realized that that wouldn't really help for Xanthor because she's too tall. Yeah, that was the uh, the give back what you take or whatever. Yeah, the give back what you take. Yep, that's what that was. You're supposed to do the switcheroo. Um, with what? We didn't have a oh, with the cube piece that we already had. It was it was a. You remember in Raiders of the Lost Ark, where he tries oh. to swap the sandbag for the idol, and he gets it wrong. Admittedly, uh, yeah, it didn't work too well for him. That's that's the same trap. Huh. Somebody who watched this watched Indiana Jones. Um, anyway, I just like how they throw a frog hemoth outside and then a DC 12 poison save. Like, really? Yep. One of these is much worse than the other. <laughs> uh, oh, if, it was, if I knew it was poison, I would have just made us both immune to poison and then we could have just stayed in there as long as we wanted. Yeah. <laughs> you can do that? Yeah. <laughs> you serious? Trying to poison a cleric, the one class that's probably the best against that sort of shit? Besides a druid who was just outright immune to it after a certain level. Yeah. You guys have lots of abilities. Yep. 
Or it's spells, I guess. At the moment I would have noticed we were taking poison damage, I would have been like, oh, okay, protection from poison. Yep. That's one solution. So the fun thing is the way the other party solved this, just to let you know, because it's such, it was such a fun solution. I think yeah. they did actually use stone shape to make like a hole they could crawl through in the door, so they just bypassed everything. <laughs> they were just like, let's make a hole in the door. Okay. Big <laughs> fucking hole coming right up. <laughs> well, it wasn't big. They had to crawl through it, because I think it's, what, like five feet? Yeah. Yeah. Bob. It's like a five-foot passage, so. Yeah. Which, so of funny. course, broke every part of this encounter, but that's fine. Um, I mean, Zareth was doing it for a while, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, stone shape, not mold earth. Yeah. But anyway. same principle, like, yes, to bypass. Yes. Um, okay. So you guys have the cube? So this... I'll just, we have the old spark. Now we we can have report the old spark. Um, so this cube... Uh, so the two cubes, just you know, this one has, um, it's about a three inch cube on a side. Um, this one has a carving of something that looks like that frog creature you just fought. Um, the other cube that you have uh, looks like a cat with snakes coming out of its shoulders. So, yeah. Um, Sorry, so can you just go begin a cat with... With snakes coming out of its, kind of its upper shoulders. I wonder if I'm... Yeah, that's fantastic. I think the handout just has all of them, so I just want to double check. Oh, you're right. I'm just writing it down. Yeah. I'm just trying to see if there's... Is there... I not have a handout for that? Special items? Nope. Supplemental supplemental rules? We don't need those. Um Interesting. Oh hey. That's cool. I didn't even know any of this existed. <laughs> Frog Hemoth! <laughs> there you go, that's what you just fought. That cute Thinking guy. My definition, of cute, my definition of cute is two very different things. Yeah, weird. Oh, chapter five? No, chapter three, handouts. Really? Well, that's annoying. Player handouts. Nope. Okay, I give up. I'm going to stop messing around with this. Um... So yeah, you guys are standing outside of this shrine. Uh, what would you like to do? Um, well, I guess we have the cube now, so we should probably like rest up and then go yes. look at the other area. On that note, I will be right back. I'm going to get the wife and I'll be two seconds. Yeah, I'm going to stop it for a sec. Did you ask? Uh, sorry, I hit the button again. You're asking if there's a quest related to the dragon that the pseudo dragon yeah. that Bell had. Yeah. Now her quest Pretty was sure to find Artis. Okay. Or well, her real quest was to get the Ring of Winter, but you know. Well, yeah. someone else happened. went crazy and took it. Yeah. Well, she gave it up too. Oh, <laughs> it's not yeah. like she fought back after Sarah took it. Yeah, well, she did ask, and then, yeah. <laughs> she asked if Sarah had it, and that was pretty much it. She's like, okay, probably better that I don't. Um, oh, you know what? Because I just realized that, like, if she has all of those magical items that, um, well, she had upon the party split, I guess. What was that? That's thinking that she has an awful lot of abilities if she has that r amulet ring and all the other enchanted items at the party that <laughs> she had on the person. I mean, by the time we get back to Sarath, I'm, 
I'm less concerned about all of that. I feel like there's one main magic item that she has that's important. I know, but still. Um, okay, so do you guys want to do anything else here at this shrine? Um, be in the pond? I don't know. Besides the rest? Americana takes up his second career as a pool boy. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, well, then I'll just do that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Motivational speech. Everybody gets five temporary hit points and advantage on wisdom saving throws. What are you trying to be a paladin all of a sudden? Um, uh, no, she's just advising them. Can give fucking prophecies of that, so. She can just curate the ones that she gives out. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to take us back to the map just to. <laughs> I'm assuming you're done there. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at the clock just to see if we where we get to by the end of everything tonight. Oh, do we have time to rest? What? Do we have time to long rest? Uh, you can yeah. try to long rest. Where do you want to long rest? It's got walls and stuff, it seems like. Better than just doing so out in the jungle. Oh, you can, you can declare you're taking a long rest. Oh, uh, I guess I'll do that unless there's any objections. I burned a few spells. Everybody's kind of like, okay. Um. So, somebody roll a d hundred for me. You got it. One second. No, no, no. I know what I'm doing. What did you roll? 54. 54. So, uh, before the long rest completes, uh, you guys actually, a pack of uh, snake things actually come and try and attack you in the night. Um, as soon as I figure out where they are, I will tell you what we do next. Oh, let's see here. Cool. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I need a blank map for this. Now we'll just go back to the... Back to that map, because you're resting at the shrine. <laughs> um, let's roll a d6. Oh, well, this will be maybe underwhelming. Um, who has a passive perception higher than 14? Um. Besides you. <laughs> but besides Andrew. Uh, passive. Me? me. Uh, yeah, no. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens here. Uh, so as you're sleeping, uh, a pair of snake things uh, slither in um, to attack you guys. I think, does anybody... I need to get closer. I need to get closer. Why is it not showing me all of the stuff? There we go. Okay, so she's a 13. He's a 13. 13. Zombie doesn't count. She totally sees it coming. You totally <laughs> see it coming. Americana does not. Okay, so uh, Orvex, Masika, and Xanthi, you notice these snakes coming. Um, it is Shadow like... warning and run at them if I can. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say one of the snakes gets an attack off, and it's going to attack Artis, um, just because they actually get this ability. So, first one, and it does nothing. So that's fantastic. Um, 
and I'm just going to quick roll a whole bunch of things. Get him, zombie. It jumps around every time someone else will. Yeah. So, uh, Murakana, it is nighttime. Um, Doesn't matter, we got glowing weapons. Oh, yeah, well, I guess Xanthio gives, uh, gives off some stuff. So, uh, you guys are kind of camped here. There is a snake that has slithered up right here. Uh, and I guess there's another one on the other side, just to make this more interesting slightly. Um, so, Murakana, there are. Two snakes, big snakes, uh, that have attacked you guys in the night. You're woken by the shouts of some of your party members, and it is your turn. Alright. I run and fall off the top of that deal and. Make an acrobatics <laughs> check. Ah, <yeah. laughs> Yeah, you're just trying to jump over a fucking horse. Yes! And you do it, Xanthiel. You are um, insulted, but also impressed. <laughs> Carry on. Alright, I read and wop it up. Wow, that was pitiful. I mean, you hit it. I'm still going to hit. Not very good hits, but still hits. <laughs> So let's see here, uh, 6 plus 5 is 11. So you do 11 damage. Um, God damn it. I need to... You put a pretty good hit on that snake. Uh, oh, anything else? Sorry. That's it. I'm that, rage, so... The snake that you just attacked uh, gets to attack you. This should be interesting. Hey! Take nine piercing damage as the snake uh, lashes forward and bites you. Nine? It says five. I'm sorry, five. <laughs> so what? And we cut that in half. Woo! So, two. Real heavy hitter, Jakuli. I love being a tank. I hope you all know that. Uh, zombie I'm a tank, I'm a tank. I'm a tank, I'm a tank, I'm a tank! <laughs> Get zombie! Holy shit. That zombie's pretty fucking dope. Damn. This is it's like... almost worth standing next to a stinking little sack of rotten meat. This is the A2 zombie right here. Fucking 11 damage. Yep. So if you actually hit. Bam. Oh, well, 26. Yeah, that hit. Get um, out of it. It is hot as up out there, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'm doing this as hard as I ever have. Um, does the zombie do anything else? I don't think it can. No, it only has one attack, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Undead fortitude. So the snake's gonna bite back. Okay. Against the... Yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> five, five damage as it bites the zombie and is unsatisfied as it realizes it is not a living creature. Um, yeah, this Chikuli is not happy. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to try to start running away. <laughs> um, did it didn't just disappear off the map. It did. It didn't disappear off the map. It went around the wall. Um, what movement do they have? 30 feet? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So it's at the edge of the map. Um, it is Xanthiel's turn. Cool. I'm 40 feet of movement. <laughs> <laughs> clop, 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 clop. You know, trying to run away from a horse doesn't usually work. Um, Excuse me. Well, so it's wounded, right? Like, pretty good. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, told the dead. Bong. Wisdom saving throw for the Jakuli. My camera's all fucked up, but I'm not gonna deal with that right now. Um, oh, it's one two d twelve actually because it's worded. It succeeded. Somehow it succeeded, so I think it does no damage, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. It succeeds okay. on a wisdom saving throw or takes one d eight. So it succeeded. Yeah. So it takes that. Um, so unfortunately, uh, in our first use of Toll the Dead, Toll the Dead did nothing. Uh, where is but I still get it with my hairs because I charged oh, it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that trample, uh, you crush it. It is dead. Sweet. <laughs> Steps on its head and runs off. I feel like something about hooves crushing a snake is super fitting, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, oh. There's cameraman, default, observer. Save changes. Did that do it? There we go. I fixed my camera just in time for that thing to be dead. Um, nice. Okay, so you moved, you acted. Oh, is that a bonus? Yeah, that act? should be a okay. Yeah, that was a bonus. Oh, you can't. I don't think you can. Is hooves part of your attack? Uh, it's. Hang on, I'll try to show up. I don't think you can toll the dead and hoof it in the same turn. I should be able to. One second. Go to the features thing. Uh, They're unarmed yeah. strikes. It's a racial racial trait. Charge. If you move at least 30 feet straight forward towards a target and then hit it. Oh, right. You have to hit it with a melee attack. Yeah, no yeah, one. So it is not dead, actually. Fair enough. Um, no, it has. There. No, nope, that's fine. I just want to make sure I have it right. Um, cool. So it was a good idea. Just can't full action spell and full action attack. Um, yep. Do you have a bonus action? Close. I don't think so. Okay. Slightly. It is Masika's turn. Yeah. Um, this might be quick. She's gonna attack, uh, she's gonna run forward and attack the snake next to you, Maracana. And that'll do it. Her first attack just slices its head off. Um, <laughs> I should probably give Masika to somebody else at some point, and maybe even Artis. Um, I mean, I thought that Art Maracana was to control Artis and Masika. Um, yeah, I mean... Here's here's my homework assignment, Maricana. Um I'll say it after the combat's over. Uh, it's yeah. Zendala's turn. Uh, she can move what thirty feet, I think. Should say thirty-five. Yep. Oof, Jesus. <laughs> what gonna, the hell is that, Zendala? So it's it's. I guess being woken up in the middle of the night, she's just not quite able to, to get the firebolt off it's right, fine. and it goes wide. Um, is that a crit fail? Yep. She probably threw it at Xanthiel or something. Uh, I'm going to say actually she does hit Xanthiel. Uh. So, there you go, because you're directly in line. So yeah, Xanthiel takes 19 fire damage, and Zendala's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry! <laughs> um, is there a con saving throw? In oh, for concentration? Uh, yeah, but I, think, Wait, I don't think she's concentrating, not on, concentrating anything. on anything. concentrating on anything. Yeah, it's just, oh. Yeah, nope. You're good. Um, how long does Toll the it Dead It just does that every time it comes to spell. Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. Um, no, so that's the Zendala. It's Artis's turn. How far can Artis move? 30 feet. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He can get to there, and I guess he'll shoot. Who knew his longbow would get so much work in this game? <laughs> uh, That's a little it... longer. Oh, sorry. They're right next to each other. Yeah. That'll hit for 6. That will kill the snake. He just shoots hey. it into the ground, and... Uh, that's the end of that. 
heal. And so you guys can finish your long rest in peace after killing these two Jakulis. You guys woke me up for this. Ah. Oh, honey. <laughs> as you get a long rest. Yeah, uh, just before, because I might as well burn that slot. Gale is so pissed. What, that he doesn't get- that he got healed for nothing? Yeah. Go that he- oh. wait. I don't know. He, she, they. What pronoun is Gale? Is it they? You always say they, or we. Yeah, I just go with that. Okay, I wrote they. Um... They are upset. Yes, they are upset. Um... So, for... Did even get to shoot a snake. <laughs> Why did I even get out of bed? Um... So obviously you, you were just burritoed up in your blanket. You just rolled over. <laughs> um, if it wasn't Poga gone out of the sleeping bag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you try to long rest here, um, kind of out in the open, I will have you guys roll on the random encounter table um, to see what yep. happens. Um, yeah. Just so there you go. You're warned now that it's happened. Uh, Murakana, here's my homework for you. Go read. Do you have the player handbook? I can get access to it. Uh, read up what a fighter can do, because that's what artist is. Fighters can do some stupid. Um. To be fair, I, he is built as a fighter. I'll double check him over the next week. But yeah. if you want, you can start running him. Um, I'll cool pull that. And Gale, if you want to run Masika. Uh, Masika basically just has a triple multi attack. Um, oh dear. That's her three Kopesh blade attacks. That's why oh, she yeah. comes in like a fucking whirlwind every time. Because um, <laughs> I would much rather let the three of you control them and do the tactics for them. Um, because then I'm not stealing your thunder uh, when we have stuff. Um, yeah. So there you go. Right. Um, I'll double check Masika and I'll ping you, Gail, if there's anything I think. Well, let me just do it real quick, because Masika's different. I might rebuild... Um, have you ever played a rogue? Uh, in 5 e not really, no. I'm vaguely familiar with how the whole sneak attack and all that works, though. Are you interested in rogues at all? I don't normally play them because I normally have something else in mind, but... Because my thought is to just... Right now, Masika's made as an NPC... Um, what I could do is just remake her as a rogue that's party level equivalent and give her to you. Um, All right. And that way each of you has your main character and an NPC so that during combat um, I'm not controlling half of the party. <laughs> Besides, like, I'll control Orvex, but I, yeah, now that we have four NPCs and three players, um, I don't want to play with myself. Yeah. Come on, had to happen. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'll make sure the characters are updated correctly and then let you guys pretty much, each of you have full visibility and control over each of those, um, characters. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, cause I think that will make things more interesting. Um, and if it becomes too much, let me know. Like the, the the whole idea is for it to be more of you guys controlling things. Um, it's a challenge in this game, uh, especially this campaign. We're actually on the low end of NPCs that a lot of people end up having. Um, okay, so you guys successfully uh, finish your long rest. Um, what would you like to do next? Uh, I guess I don't know where we want to go next. What? Where do we want to go next? Probably. Well, we've already looked at Shigambi, haven't we? Like that point four. So I'm gonna say that you have the cube from Shigambi. Um, yep. Just because I don't particularly want to run a Shigambi again. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, and I think you well, were I guess... there. Weren't you there for the whole thing, Lyokan? Pretty sure. 
So, I don't really want to run you through something that you've already seen happen once. Because that doesn't seem like a... Fair enough. I'm probably also going to delay the videos a bit just so I know if you guys are going to the same shrines. <laughs> Uh, I guess we uh, start looking for the nearest sort of be the next shrine. Uh, that, so what I kind of... what I told the other group, and I'll tell you guys, is that um, now obviously I'm biased because I know where everything on this map is. Um, yeah. But each shrine is actually drawn on this map. I do seem walled off. Like it's definitely a recurring theme. Like that fucking one in the <laughs> the that, is, that, is fine. that definitely that looks fine. like a shot. It even looks pretty much the same, just different angle. Uh, how are we gonna get there without fucking flying over it? Over to it. Um, so um, well, well, we can deal with that when we get to it. I'll describe more about that if we actually go to it. This looks like a shrine right here. Yeah, we can go to that, because there's a bridge, like, there-ish. Well, let's just head that direction. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so for for some context, um, this city is hideously overgrown. Um, and Orvex explains that the city's been kind of mostly uninhabited for probably... 50 to 100 years, so moving through the city is going to take slower than it seems like. Um, I'm not going to make you guys necessarily roll for random encounters unless you decide to investigate a location. Um, so like if you pick a building and decide to investigate it, if it's a shrine, it'll be a shrine. If it's not a shrine, it'll be a random roll to f see what happens. Um, uh, but by and large, moving from like where the Kubazan Shrine is, number three, to the main road, that actually takes about two hours because you're just hacking through heavy jungle um, because of how overgrown and, and crumbled stone this is. Um, so I'll say to get to, if you're trying to go to that bridge, you'll get there about midday after you rest. Does all of that make sense? Sorry, I just explained works for me. three things at once. Yeah, okay. it works for me. Cool. Um, so you do you stop and investigate anything on the way, or are you just beelining for the bridge? And if we see anything interesting, I probably would. Um, so without going into any of the buildings you pass, they all look like... At one point, this city was... Uh, pretty opulent. Um, you can tell from the construction of the buildings. Uh, I mean, they built raised roads through the whole thing. Um, in certain places, those roads have crumbled and are overgrown at this point, but uh, as you pass along those buildings without going in any of them, you don't see anything in specific that would draw you to them. If you want to investigate any of them, you certainly can. Um, there may or may not be stuff there. Um, but otherwise, if you guys are just kind of beelining for the bridge, I'm just going to draw a route real quick. Um, that's kind of the route I'm guessing. Um, I mean, but I'd probably, I don't know, Santhi will probably slow down and stop if, like, she, she thought that a building might have supplies in it, I guess. But other than that, no. Um, so, one, two, three, four, five. Once again, taking advantage of a passive perception to note if there's anything oh, like Jesus viable. Christ. Okay, yeah. Uh... Okay, so let's do it this way. Um, yeah, because you have an insanely high passive perception. Um, Banish, you sacrificed a feat to do it. So. Oh, yeah. One, two, three. I'm going to say there are five buildings of interest. Um, yeah. What I need you to do is... Let's start with one D100 roll. Uh, so the first building you pass kind of over here uh, yep. that building as you look inside it as you pass it seems to have vines writhing inside of it uh, like moving oh. vines that's um, probably not good <laughs> yeah. do, do you want to investigate it or do you want to keep going I would advise we skip it because those sound like assassin vines 
Cool. Yeah. Uh, give me another D hundred. Best roll. Okay. Um. Okay. Roll one more time too. And give me a D six. I'm using tables this time. Um, <laughs> so, as you pass this second building here, um, yep. it has a weird blue mist filling it. Within that mist, you can vaguely see what you think are serpent-like sh uh, shapes kind of slithering back and forth on the ground inside the dimly lit interior. So it's probably got you on T in it, I'm guessing. Do you want to go in, or what do you want to do? I don't know. Leave it up to the party, I reckon. What do you, what do you think? We could probably go in there and stomp them, but... Uh... I mean, it looks like shrine, so there's no point in messing with it. Yeah. Right up here, over uh, to the head, there looks like a shrine. And to the right of that looks like a shrine. Well, we could probably just keep on trolling. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, uh, roll me one more D hundred. I got two more of these just to see what shows up. Seventy-four. Uh, roll a D six. Two. Okay, so you see, uh, inside the courtyard of this building uh, there is a bush where the hell is that fucking reference Jesus Christ thanks guys for giving me a table that doesn't reference the damn thing <laughs> sorry this is something you might want so I just want to make sure I actually oh okay flora and fauna 205 oh of course because I have to go to the table of contents, not a fucking index. Um, bop, 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 bop. Cool. So you see a bunch of bushes. Um, they kind of look like tea leaves to you. You're not sure, because uh, you're not from Chult, but... Um, in, in your past, these bushes remind you of kind of medicinal herbs um, you've seen before. So if, if you could, in theory, harvest the leaves and potentially brew them into something. Yeah, she will do that. I think she has a pretty good medicine skills. Sure. Um, yeah, she does. She's specialized in Do you have medicine? Yeah, she's got... That's one of her professions. Oh, yeah, roll me up. Roll me a medicine check. Yeah. That'll oh, work. Not yeah. I'm, I'm, I was going for a 10. Oh, um, yeah. So you're pretty sure these leaves. Um, actually, sorry, roll me one more d6. Oh, that's disappointing. Um, so you can get about eight ounces of these leaves. They're mango leaves. Uh, you might not know that, but I'm just saying it in case we run into it again. Um, you can brew these as a tea. Uh, and basically, anybody that drinks that tea uh, gets a... Per ounce of leaves that you put in that tea, they get a temporary hit point. Um, if you drink too much of it, it may cause a problem. Yeah, so you've got eight ounces of these mango leaves. So if you brew them into tea, that's up to eight temporary hit points you can give to people. And I'll just do... Oh, go ahead. No, no, you're right. I was just thinking. Um, I'll have you roll one more D100 for the remaining couple buildings, just to not make this be endless. And roll one more. Uh, so the building you're looking in, we'll say it's this one. Um, 
the floor looks really weak. Yep. Uh, like if you walked on it, you'd probably collapse it. Do do you want to walk in and? <laughs> do I want to collapse it? <laughs> um, I'm good. Like Gal could probably get away with it. Like they're um really light, aren't they? Yeah, like very you, light. Like, an, an air fucking jet or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you want to float in there? What could possibly go wrong? Uh, uh Gale, a me, lot. Roll me a d hundred. Roll it. <laughs> Sorry. Six three. Oh boy. Okay. Um. A lot. A roll, lot could go roll, wrong. Okay. So. <laughs> roll one more time while I look something else up. <laughs> You found 22. 22 is nothing. So as you go in, um, too late for you to notice, there's a blue mist uh, filling the entire place. And I just have to look up how that Is works. this the part where we stop breathing? <laughs> You're not going to die. <laughs> that's not reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's got to be worth something. Um... Where the fuck is this? Page 37. I think they could put this all in the same place. Why is it so simple? You sound like you're at the bottom of the ocean again. You kidding me? Oh, you're better now. Okay, you know better. I'm just going to look this up on fucking Google because it'll be faster. Does it just cause... Okay, it just does that. Okay, fine. But then why have two different entries for it, you motherfuckers? Oh, because of course they call it one thing and then call it a different thing somewhere else. Uh, let's see here. Make a constitution saving throw, Gale. Fifteen. Oh. You passed. Um, so you breathe the mist in, but it doesn't seem to have any effect on you, and you see that weak floor beneath you, uh, and that's what you see inside this building. Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot here. I was a trial, probably made it hallucinate and then fall through the floor or something. What would it have done? I'm guessing, like, it might have made him hallucinate or something, and he does something on the floor. If you ever find a weird blue mist again, just keep breathing deeply, and I can tell you what it does to you. Yeah, we're just gonna back out of there, and, uh... Yeah, let's not. Let's, let's not. <laughs> no, there's nothing good in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So that's cool. kind of all the fun exploration. Um, Moose haunted. It's midnight on my end. Um, how's everybody feeling right now? I mean, it's only uh, two in the hour of the name, so I don't mind. It's only two in the hour for you fucking bogan. How you doing, Gail? <laughs> Alright. Arm? Fantastic. Okay. Then, you approach this tree uh, that is across the river. I'm going to activate a scene. Uh -oh. get, get you guys on it. I mean, shouldn't that be a sign when I ask you how you feel about how it is at midnight? <laughs> um, let me find some actors. We've got Zandala. We've got Artis. We've got Masiko. We've got a Gale. We've got a Xanthiel. How long does it take you, Gale, to rebuild Silu? Uh, I... Th just whatever action A in Infusion is, which I think is just a regular action. And we've got a Silu. Okay. So I think I should have you guys on the map now. Um, hopefully it's loading in. Is 
just realized that I can control my token with the WSA and D keys. Hmm. You guys all loaded in? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so... Looks like oh. it. So you see, this is the river. Uh, there is a tree that has collapsed or fallen across the river. And on both sides, there's a bunch of ruins of buildings. Um, I ask what happened to the tree. You ask what happened to the tree? I asked the tree what happened to it, yeah. The tree does not respond. Well, okay. The strong, silent type. I get it. One, one may say almost as uh, obdurate as oak. <laughs> I've already had a vodka, so I'm impressed with that. I don't know about the rest of you. <laughs> that was like, that was like a, a 25 cent word when I could have used a f fucking penny. Okay. <laughs> well, so are those buildings or like are they? Yeah, those are rooftops, basically. Oh, okay. Oh, who smells a trap? Oh, I do. Mm. But I'm also going to hey. count on her obscenely high percentage. Hey, Maricana, do you want to take your long rest that you took? Love to. Thank you for asking. I'm gonna refill my vodka and then come back. So don't either of you move until I come back. <laughs> Fucking GM foreshadowing by accident. God damn it. Okay, did you long rest? I believe you did. I am back. Okay, so both of you are on the edge of the trunk. What do you guys do? Um, well, I'm running in circles. Oh, this smells like a well, good time to get the gun out. All of the map all of a sudden. Is it blood on the last map? Sorry? Yeah, I see blood. I do, in fact, see blood. Okay, that wasn't there just a second ago. I don't know what happened. Sorry, you keep cutting in and out for me. I said there's blood all over the map all of a sudden. Really? Yeah. Well, that shouldn't be there, so I don't know why that's there. Because it's, it's on the client screen, but it's not on... The GM screen. Hold on. That is that is a bug. Um, let me go to my modules. Oh boy. Okay. Blood and guts. Advanced config. Wipe scene splats. There we go. Yay! Sorry, I don't know why that. I probably did you did that happen right after you hit long rest? Yeah, <laughs> like just bam. It was everywhere. probably some weird uh, fuck up. I don't know. Murakana just burst into bloody flames. And yeah, I don't know. All right. Anyways, mods are fun in Foundry. Yes, they <laughs> sometimes are. they do weird shit. <laughs> I think that's the second time that's happened too. Well, I look forward to the third because we're definitely going to see it. So, anyways, I'm going to grab a rock, and I'm going to just actually throw that sucker straight down the tree trunk. Just thump, 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 thump. You throw a rock down the tree trunk? Yep, just right down the center line all the way to the other side. So it kind of bounces, bounces, pew, and yeets off into the water. Bloop. Sure. I'm gonna walk forward, keeping an eye out if there's anything like around trying to ambush us or whatever. Yeah, let me let me do something real quick. 
<laughs> Stop moving, Marikana. <laughs> Don't worry. Zephyr, they need quite a bit to hit her at this point, I think. Well, the thing is, I'm rather fond of your new character. I think she's cool. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Uh, what's her passive perception? Only one. Okay, cool. I wanted to roll a number to to actually just you know do it. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, as you walk across the bridge, um, or the the tree, um, you don't notice anything. Uh oh. Damn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And an in character wouldn't know that there's here, so fair enough. Um, oh, we're just going to keep walking because she didn't notice anything. So as you kind of cross the midline of the bridge, yep. you you hear a sound as an arrow shoots at you. And let me uh, let's see here. I'm gonna I'm gonna call this the first round of combat for okay. reasons. Um, and I'm, I'm, I am doing it for reasons. Um, uh oh, because, oh your character. <laughs> uh, no, because there are abilities and things for what's about to happen that I, I need to track if it was the first round of combat or not. Does that make sense? Get off the bridge. Uh, okay, let's see here. So this guy is going to have. Uh, How did you roll a zero? Wow, minus one. Um, she didn't have money. She should have. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, because this okay. one doesn't have much dex. So how many? Two attacks. Okay, so two arrows come at you, Xanthiel. Okay. The first one. <laughs> Jesus Christ, private roll. Um, well, that that doesn't hit. Uh, the second roll. Whoa, what the hell was that? Whoa, what the? What? Explosions? The fuck? Did somebody, who did that? That was me. I don't know. I clicked the wrong button. You're on the measurement okay. thing. Oh, I was like, what? Was that fireballs? <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, let me... Second thing. Damn. Just can't hit you. So both yeah, arrows right. miss you. <laughs> uh, Bag of nails. What the fuck? I was just thinking that. And it is now actually... We're getting attacked on nails. Um... Oh, what did I roll before I rolled? Shit, I have to look at my roll. Fuck me. What was I'd rather roll? not. Okay, I'm going to write a number down on a piece of paper so I don't have to scroll upwards in my private fucking roll. Cool. Okay, it is Artis's turn. Um... What do you guys want artists to do? Right now, Xanthiel, you know you got shot at twice. Yeah, um, but you don't know where they are. Yeah, but they missed. Yep. Yeah. I don't know when you reckon, Marikana. Huh? What do you think artists should do? Well, I would say drop a fireball on the nearest nearest building and call oh. for air support, but... Artis is a fighter. I know, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, Artis oh, is going to ready an action to try and shoot at anybody that becomes visible. And that's, that's Artis' good one. Uh, Masika. What is she going to do? She can move 40 feet. Uh, so the top of this tree, I'm going to say, is heavy heavy cover. Um, Sika, Dash is moving twice, isn't it? Well, whatever. She's going to get most of the way across the trunk with her action. And that's about all she can do. Uh, Murakana, it is your turn. Can we shield another player? Only if you have an ability. That's a... Okay. I, can, I can do I that. But... Certain but even, 
certain fighter subclasses can do that, but okay, that's so they can specific. cover another player. Oh, okay, for some reason I thought that was an action. Uh, Shield of Faith is where I can give someone else like plus two AC or something. Ah, that's a spell. I just for some reason I thought you could use a like a shield to shield another player, but I guess that's I'm that's a pathfinder. Oh, that's where it's from. Okay, I read it somewhere recently, and yeah, I thought that's it was that's probably a path. I mean, I know Pathfinder First Edition has it. I'm assuming Second Edition has it for some of the marshals. Because in Pathfinder Two, shield is an action to raise your shield. Um, so, but we can talk about that later. It doesn't matter now. What yeah, do you want to do? I'm going to sprint across here. Because sprint burns up my action bonus action, right? Uh, no, it takes your action. So dash takes up your movement and action, and it lets you move twice. So you can move five more feet. So you're in heavy in cover. cover. So if you don't have a bonus action to do, that would be everything. I got nothing. So uh, I guess I can rage, but if I don't get shot at, then it does me no good. So I'm just going to take cover here. He's learning. Uh, <laughs> it is Zendala's turn. Uh, Zendala... I just want to say one thing. What? I have played way too much Battletech, so for some reason I wanted to declare Entrenched. <laughs> Don't worry, once once we get through Tomb of Annihilation and get you set up in Pathfinder, you'll have a lot more options to take. <laughs> Arm, I gotta show you... Uh, what is it? Shit, I forget the name of it. The, uh, the mech RPG. Lancer. That's what it was. I, I feel like that would be the perfect thing for me, because I'm entrenched right now. <laughs> do, do I need to go buy a Lancer book? Is that what you guys It's free! Me? Like, the Lancer PDF is free. I don't want a fucking PDF. I can't read PDFs. Uh, I don't know if they make books. Xanthiel, I honestly don't. what do you have uh, Zandala do? Uh, we know that the arrows came from the trees. You know the arrows came from the far side of the river. They went past you. Oh, first I need to make Sandella take a long run. Apparently she has no spells. <laughs> cool. Um. Shit. Oh, shit. I'll get her to... I'll say you also know they came from the north side. They came from north of you. Because they passed by you. From, like, yeah, like, I feel northeast like she... to southwest. So they're like here-ish. Somewhere up there, yeah. You don't know where exactly, though. Uh, she's going to hold Fireball, and the moment they make themselves known, they're going to eat one. And probably range on that. No, it doesn't matter. It's the entire map. <laughs> Her passive is 15. Okay, cool. That is Zendala's turn. She's holding Fireball in case she sees somebody. Yep. Uh, let's see. Xanthia rolled a fucking one. As one. So How do zero. I? Oh shit, it didn't put me in. God damn it. Yeah. I have to Google something real quick. Oh, whether she even gets a turn. What does that mean? Hmm? No, I don't... Fuck you, I'm talking to myself, I'm sorry. You're not talking to yourself, you're talking to the whiskey. It's vodka. Ah... Uh... Wow, that's a whole bunch of bullshit. Okay, so I'm going to do what my home rule was. I'll explain it after we're done with this. Um, I looked it up. Apparently it doesn't mean any difference. It just means I start at the bottom. Oh, I wasn't looking at your initiative. Oh. Sorry, I was looking at what I'm doing to make sure I'm not breaking rules. Huh. That doesn't matter. Like we should have seen them by now. Uh, the short answer is no, you haven't. Um, 
for reasons that I will explain after combat. Um, okay, cool. So let's see here, Murakana, let's see what happens here. So the first attack is going to be at a minus four from what I roll. Oh god! So does a... Uh, yeah, that'll hit you, won't it? Yeah, that, that's not even a question. That smacks the shit out of me. So that's 30 damage. Jesus. Second attack. Not hit. Yeah. And let's see here. I have to Google one more thing. Because I was not intending on running this tonight. Oh, I should have had an advantage on that. Okay. But that's not the question I wanted to know. Because, of course, the rules on this are bizarre. That's fucking stupid. Okay, um... So, Americana, you know somebody attacked you uh, from kind of north-northeast, but you can't see them right now. And that is the end of that guy's turn. Gail, it is your turn. All right. Sorry, I'm rapidly Googling stealth, hiding, movement, and attacking, and the effects they all have on each other. And apparently in 5e, the answer is basically nothing. That said, I'm slowly calculating down the stealth roll that this guy got per turn. Barring other uh, events happening. Hey, how deep does this water look? That river? It's it's a flowing river. Okay, yeah, good point. Um, so, deep enough for it to be as wide as it is. We are gonna... Yeah, well, we'll get on the log. Get on the log and uh, just hold an action to shoot anyone who pops up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Xanthiel, it is your turn. Hmm. I'm also going to move Silo up a bit. So. We're going to start your turn with my character going, Ow! <laughs> I think that was technically on your turn. Eh, close enough. This is all like 15 seconds apart, I'm assuming. So that puts you in heavy cover. Okay. Um, and... I don't know. She can't really do much without seeing it. I'll say if you want to take like a search action or something, I'll let you basically just roll an active perception check to see if you can figure out where this person is. Sure. Oh, there, there you go. go. You got it. Boom. There is a uh, tabaxi cat person uh, in the corner of this building over here. Uh, oh. Let's see, so the ready to actions, artist was to shoot if they can see somebody, but artist doesn't necessarily see it. Oh, I'm sorry, what do you do with that information? I, I bellow and point as to where that guy is. Um, so I'll say artist can shoot at disadvantage because of what he's shooting through, and Zendala... That's, that's a weird one. <laughs> Just kind of goes wherever she wants it. Yeah... Is it a point you can see? Um, I will... Uh, a point you choose within range. You don't have to see it. The fire spreads around corners. God, I really want a Warhammer 40k, like, spread die right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the target, like, you have a... As a blast, a, does a more. third percent of a chance that it hits where you want, and a bunch that you yeah. don't. Instead that... of it like 
where she can where she is she can hit that guy perfectly she can hit him but she can't see him at all and she doesn't know what that building looks like that's my challenge right there how uh, mr bond let's do oh, it she could, she could shoot at him at the old points roughly i'm gonna say let's roll like a 50 50 for a uh, uh, fuck it i don't know yeah sure launch a fucking fireball whatever <laughs> I mean, this is where I don't know how to. I I have no idea, so I'm just gonna go rules as written. Um, you pointed forward. Um, so she'll like, like lob it, kind of. Here, let's see. Oh my god, what's oh? I'm I'm gonna do a quick measurement just to see if my idea works. No, that doesn't really work. Okay, fine. Um, he's gonna make a deck save. Cause I'm... Yep, so it'll pass, and he has... Evasion. Oh, so he so takes like no damage. Cause he's evasive. Uh, I guess, I'm gonna say Artist can't shoot, cause he can't see it. Like, he can't see past the top of the tree, past the building, to where this guy is. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, okay, so you moved, you took a bonus I'll action, I'll say, to do the perception. Do you want to take an action? Oh, is that it? Okay. I'm going to call it a bonus um, action, because... I don't want to take an action, I'm just trying to find it again. Sorry, I think 5e has like really weird, non-useful rules for this. Because the guy was stealth, right? But... Yeah. Uh, so a guiding bolt... Um, sorry, my computer made a whole bunch of noise. So you're making a ranged spell attack. That would be partial cover, so it still hits. Um, on a hit, they hit. take radiant damage, so he takes 14 radiant damage. Yep. Okay. And anyone who attacks him also has advantage and is eliminated by in cool um okay then it is so he's gonna have a <laughs> wait Silu has their own turn uh it's just after Gale so I already did the move so don't worry oh, okay. about that I'm just gonna delete Silu from the turn order because it's confusing to me um so it is Artis's turn uh he's frustrated because he can't see anything you know, you can see the floating outline. Well, there's the tree canopy in the way. Okay. Um, so he's going to come up here and take two shots at disadvantage. Uh, wouldn't they can cancel out? Because guidance gives you advantage. Oh, yep, oh, they would. You're right. So, longbow. One. Oof. Longbow. <laughs> two. Let's see here. Uh, neither of those hit. So that's no, it. Uh, Masika. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She can't really get there, so she's gonna stay in heavy cover and end her turn. Uh, Murakana, it is your turn. Fantastic. Oh, did that thing take 14 damage as well? I don't remember it taking the damage. The enemy? Yeah, he took... Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah he no, did. he did. Yeah, he took 14 damage. Oh, good. That's the only damage he's taken so far. Because the fireball I'm... didn't affect him. I'm having a brain fire, probably because my 6 to I work weak. Barbarians have a 35-foot run rate, or move, movement. You have rate. a 40-foot movement. Okay, that's why. I'm just going crazy then. <laughs> I'm going to move right... Or no, I'm not. Oh, wait, I want the... Uh... I'm going to rage. And as I rage, I'm going to say stand to or die. Stand and deliver your money or your life, or both. 
Both is good. Lupins! <laughs> Somebody got it. Okay. Um, do you do anything else? I crossbow him in the face. Hey! You don't have a bandage on there. <laughs> yeah, great point. You hit him for six. Whee! It is Zandala's turn. Kill. Well, uh, she can move 35 feet, I think. Um, can she hit that guy from here? It's, um, it's, it's going to be full cover, so minus four. Okay. Between the trees and the, and the building he's inside, I'm going to say that's minus four. That. 20 minus. Yep, that'll hit. Sweet. So, 12 Gotta love fire guide damage. Both. <laughs> yep. Cool. Ah, what do I have to look up? Yeah, he's gonna be in trouble when the sick he gets it. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, and does Zendala. Okay, I'm just. I have to double check something real quick. And I'm apparently flipping through all the goddamn pages today. No, I don't care about the fucking Fane. Go away. <sighs> okay. Okay. Um, okay, it is this guy's turn, uh, so the first thing he's gonna do is shoot at you twice, Murakana. Shoot at you. Oh boy. Holy shit. Take it. <laughs> you take That's 3 awesome. plus 9 damage. And three Fuck. plus twelve damage. So six plus nine is a total. It's a lot. Took a lot of damage. We did. Jesus. And he's gonna move five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Boop. He's gonna jump over there. He's gonna run across the building, jump through a window into the next building. Funny uh, bitch. Yep, he is a bitch. Uh, <laughs> Gale, it is your turn. Alright. Start off by going 30 feet there. That guy's in that building. Uh, you don't even have line of sight on him right now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just getting ranges oh, do right you? now. Do, you have uh, do I have line of sight? I don't. Think okay, so. I'll say you have a minus four to that. Yeah, fuck it, I'll send it. That's at advantage anyway, so fuck it. And oh my god, I did not add. I'm an idiot. Uh, that was binge. There you go. Yeah, so that works. The twenty-one will hit for eight damage. Gotcha, bitch. What are we at? That knocks it back five foot. <laughs> Sorry, I have to do this real quick. Okay. Um, so he gets knocked back. Uh, it's five feet, right? Yep. Sure, yeah. And you, you hear shouted out in common from that building, I surrender! I surrender! Damn right. Do you guys accept his surrender? Uh, uh yes, I accept his surrender. <laughs> Come out with your ears up! Xanthia, <laughs> do you accept the surrender? Yeah, why not? Okay. And she's still gonna approach him because paranoid of like more of them jumping out, but 
So he, he tosses his bow out of one window and jumps down into this what was once street with his arms up. And uh, this is a, a, a cat person, a tabaxi male. He's got an elaborate headdress and rather shabby clothing. Um, and I think that's a good place to end it. We'll pick up next week with you guys talking to Bag of Nails. So, Interesting. Thank you all. What's up? Such a wonderful name. I just got to say that now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's what we'll pick up next week. I'll admit, I was happy I had this ready. Death Ward? <laughs> just in case it came yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to hit the button.